free country, that uh, we can carry on our own business. Well, we just ask tonight as we try to carry on the business for the city of Hartford that you'll guide our thoughts, guide our uh, words, Father, and just guide our motivation that it be to the benefit for the people of Hartford. We ask these things in your name. Amen. All right. I know one visitor that we've got, uh, Dan, you want to make your presentation about the audit tonight for us? Usually you have two things. The uh, staple one is the one that we're required to give you because you know the audit is basically conducted here at City Hall and our contact during the audit is with the mayor and Lisa and the staff and in some cases the, the council is not even aware that an audit has been conducted or what it's about. And, you know, there uh, you see through this uh, the only major estimate is per station expense. No difficulty dealing with management, performing complete the audit. And the only thing I can say was a difficulty at all, just because I, you're familiar with the term. But this is a single audit this time because of all the federal money that you had, and that takes it to a totally different level. And it becomes not just what the financial side of it is, but how you, how you handle uh, federal money. But at any rate, we didn't make any uh, any exceptions in in this first class section 14. Okay. So the audit report is the bound one, and uh, being on, on page one is the uh, actual opinion letter, and that is a clean opinion. The uh, statement in position on page four is the one that, uh, getting in 2004, uh, government's been required to report everything one presentation on a business-like basis where when you borrow money, it's a, it's a liability when you purchase fixed assets like uh, police cars and uh, fire engines and so forth, then uh, that's an asset that you appreciate just like it would be for private business. Bottom line with this on that position of governmental activities and this principal general fund, bottom line is about $2.2 million and in the business type, it's almost... Uh, Five million, so in total it's about 7.2 million bottom line, which is equivalent to that presentation of what you'd say would be the net worth of the city. And in page five is the income statement from that presentation. And the first column under expenses, and the reason that this is required to be uh, reported in this manner is because the purpose of the city is to uh, provide services to its residents. So it begins with expenses and then to the right and to the bottom. It goes into how you pay for that. In governmental activities, uh, if you go across the top of that, if you depended on just what you charge anybody for, the city would have lost almost a million dollars. But the bulk of the uh, revenues for the city are things at the bottom, like property taxes, franchise taxes, occupational taxes, and so forth. So you know, when that's all, all said and done, uh, the bottom line changes in that position. On the governmental was good, 244000 positive. 
and the business type activities of uh, water stewards was a positive of 245, 544. Bottom line was a 489, 5856 to the good. In that restatement, it's another one of those pension type things. It's OPEV, and then beginning with this year, June 30th, 18, you have to report not only what the city's proportionate liability of that underfunded um, state pension plan is, this is also the city's portion of post-employment benefits being health insurance that the city has a portion of the fact that uh, under CERS that health insurance is provided for retirement. And so that picked up an additional uh, $534,000 that reduced the net position by for the potential of what the city could be could be allocated. Uh, page uh, six is a balance sheet of the normal presentation where pretty much all you book are current assets and current liabilities. Um, and then you see the bottom line how you get from uh, total governmental fund balance of a million four eighty one down to the two point two million on on the uh, net position. In page seven is the income statement under this presentation. And again, on the general fund, it was a positive $290,491. And as least in America can tell you, once you've been on this council for a while, that hasn't happened every year at Hartford. You, know, you, you spend a lot of years of having to borrow money to finish out the year for, but basically the general fund, and when we get to it, even the even proprietary funds uh, are much improved from what they've been in the past. Uh, page, page 9 is a Water, sewer, and sanitation broken down. Uh, net position on those. Uh, the only one of those that actually has a deficit at the end is a water fund. Uh, sewer has five five million three sixty three eight ninety seven positive, and sanitation sixty seven thousand eight ninety four. And if you if you look then on page ten, that's the income statement for it. And uh, on water really uh, improved by $224,000 except for, again, that uh, restatement that cost $210,000 uh, restatement for the uh, outstanding uh, health insurance liability that could potentially be assessed somewhere down the road. Page 11 is cash flows. That's money, that's money in and money out. Page 12, the fiduciary, and that's the uh, payroll fund. It's, it's just a clearing account. This... Uh, change with this OPEB added about seven pages to the notes as if they weren't well enough already but the notes now extend all the way to page 38. Uh, most of these are just routine explains what, what the county principles are for the city. Um, page 23 is uh, changes in fixed assets. Uh, things that were added during the year, uh, principally being, if you look down, it's about halfway down, construction in process, and that's all the water improvements that weren't quite put into service by the end of the fiscal year, but they were shortly thereafter. And then the bottom shows depreciation and how it was allocated. Page 24 shows the debt. Uh, as far as anything to do with the governmental activities, 50,000 addition one time in that, but then 100,000 repaid, so it ended the year. Started the year on $50,000 on an operating loan and ended the year with that one completely paid off. And then all the rest of them, all those leases, anything that has to do with any of those other debts, there's nothing new on it. It was all just repayments. Uh, then, uh, of course, the, uh, there was a uh, short-term loan from Kentucky Water Finance for $615,000, and that's basically repaid out of the bond issue. Page 25 shows what it takes to retire all the debt. And in the governmental side, general fund basically only owe $229,000. Uh, page 26 shows the debt service for water and sewer, what it would take to retire all of that. The interest and in everything would finally be retired in 2054. Total with interest, with principal and interest, if it's not paid off in advance, is almost almost four million dollars. So then page twenty six through through thirty eight are all notes uh, pretty much related to pension and uh, uh, 
have standing uh, health insurance. Um, a couple of little notes on page 38 that they go into uh, explaining where the where that uh, uh, where the prior period adjustment came from. Almost entirely due to the OPEB, other than Nope picked up $75,000 to send town that had been floating around for a while, I think it was just finally basically acknowledged and picked up on the books. I know page 39 is a, is a general fund budget, and I think that uh, is kind of meaningful if you look at the revenue. Uh, the city uh, was short of intergovernment, under governmental revenues in total. The revenues were $471,000 less, but then the expenditures were almost $700,000 less. So the uh, the budget, even after the transfers and everything, ended up 100, almost $136,000 better than the better than the budget was. Then there's some more things on the pensions and the health insurance. Supplementary information breaks down cemetery, LGEA, and road funds. Forty-seven is uh, breaks down all the general fund expenditures. Uh, pages forty-eight and forty-nine are the control and compliance in general, and then fifty and fifty-one are the is the report on the federal money. And there weren't really any findings on either one of those. Uh, we had in the past occasionally had a finding. Sometimes it was about fair to bid, but. Uh, the, the one primary one we had one about paving, and then you, know, you went through that whole thing with me about how you saw it pretty much single source because you just don't have you only have one company that's even interested in doing any paving here. Yeah. Uh, fifty-two is just some more about the fifty-two and fifty-three, or more about the federal programs. We did have a management letter at the end from not having uh, really not having time. And these are kind of in areas of uh, suggestions. Um, we take random samples of, of all the uh, disbursements for the year, and uh, we like to see invoices all individually stamped as being paid. And we did find a few times where the statement was stamped, but not the rest. And the only reason for that is an accidental possibility of making a duplicate payment, and, and it's probably not a real serious thing with you all because you know pretty much what you buy all the time. and. You, you probably an invoice would stand out to you if it came back through the second time, but that's a suggestion. And then uh, there was one, there were times during the year, and partly because of this construction money probably, that you had some money on hand that was greater than the amount of the $250,000 at the bank plus the amount that the bank pledged in security. So that's just one to monitor, and probably that one takes care of itself now that that construction project is over. But anyway, that is... Um, Days or report any any questions. It did take us a long time to get through this system. I think I was here about four times uh, in, 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 in that uh, uh, was the main form. We we just had a lot of things happen this time. Illnesses at the office. We had a my daughter who works with me lost her father in law unexpectedly and uh, we we just had we've had one for the for the years. She has, uh, she went to a different doctor Friday and she's had a couple of good days now, so we're kind of hopeful that maybe she's telling on something that really, really works. But she had gotten down to averaging probably less than being there one day a week. So, mm -hmm. anything from anyone? Anybody got any questions? <laughs> Not a lot of reading that you'll be doing. I started to say. <laughs> <laughs> Good Can I ask a question? Yes. Is there a positive $5 million on the sewer accounts? Mm -hmm. Overall, overall, the bottom line, if you, that's not uh, cash accounts. That's all the sewer lines and equipment and everything, too, that's figured into that. The actual cash and sewer. Asset value yeah. of our lines and our that ground. That the sewer basically owned. If you want to buy our sewer business, we'll sell it to you for $5 million. <laughs> Actually, cash only. There are only about one hundred fifty thousand dollars in actual cash, but there was re uh, receivables from other funds and uh, those uh, just capital assets like the sewer plan and all the sewer lines. That was um, five point six million dollars. So.
we got a lot of sewer lines and pumps and pump stations. <laughs> Nobody has any questions about anything here? Okay. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. All right. Uh, any other visitors that wish to speak to us tonight? Do y'all have anything? Okay. Come on up and introduce yourself. And right. I know a few of y'all. My name is Kyle Smith. I'm the owner and operator of Twice as Nice Consignment down here on the corner. Um, I'm here to, today to address the no parking issue we have on West Union Street. Um, parking has been acceptable there for as long as I can remember in previous owners. But due to the new construction, there's no parking all the way down West Union Street. Um, we have two parking spots located on the side of our building. They are, one of them is where I park and one of them is where my other employee parks at. There's no handicapped parking near my building. Uh, you have to cross the road and the majority of my customers are elderly based. You know, they're retirees. This is a retiree community. Um, we do have a parking spot on the adjacent side of the road from my store in front of Likens and down West Union Street in front of the old community auction building. The measurements measured from line to line on both sides of the road is four and a half inches different on this side of the road compared to the side that I'm on. So four and a half inches and you allow parking whereas we don't have parking on my side. There's no signs indicating where our parking lot is supposed to be behind capers. Um, multiple occasions my customers have complained to me about almost getting hit trying to cross the crosswalk there. It's a dangerous intersection coming from both ways. Uh, no parking is putting a damper on my business. My business is down almost 40% in the last three months because there's no parking issue. Um, I mean, we want to try to advance and further the business and grow community-wise. Um, at this time, feel free to give any advice or ask any questions that you have, but we'd like to try to get this address where we can have some type of parking. Okay. Thank you. Do you understand what this problem is? The, you yes. know, where, where before they had parked, right. actually just the had gone up over the curb up next to the sidewalk down beyond and parked up next to the sidewalk there when it's not possible anymore. Uh, State Highway requires a curb all the way down through there. And so uh, that took out all that parking on down on his side of West Union Street. Uh, it's a problem that we've been talking about for years, really, uh, about the parking availability in Hartford. Um, once, you know, we're always open for suggestions, but uh, he mentioned on West Union, there's one spot next to uh, Likens, Right there, and then there's a couple of spots in front of what used to be the home health care. Uh, but then beyond that, you have to go over on Main Street in front of Lincoln Sprinting or the Capers lot. Once it's once this construction is finished, will be available for them. Uh, we were working on some other locations in that area, but uh, you know, people. They won't park as close to the building as they can, and they're not able to anymore. Uh, is there a crosswalk there between Lincolns and? Yes, there is a crosswalk. <laughs> there is a crosswalk down towards the intersection. Yeah, and that's between where the, the Lincolns corner right, and, right. and your corner. There's. Then that also leads into where we have three handicap ramps at the cross at the T. There's a handicap by Main Street Motors, a handicap by Images, a handicap by Lincolns. And then you have my corner, there's no handicap right there. There was a reason for that though, wasn't there? There was a budget issue with that. Yeah, was, you know, there's quite a few reasons why that was not included into this project this time. Uh, cost factor was one. Uh, it does away with some of the parking because of the handicap ramp that you had to put in. You have to go down and then come back up. 
maintain the right pitch for uh, handicap accessibility. So it was going to extend out, and, and then uh, there was some problem with uh, the sidewalk in front of his place and the awning support. Uh, there are just a lot of issues with that corner. It's going to cost us about, if I remember right, it was something a little over fifty thousand dollars just to do that corner and sidewalk and handicap ramp. Um, that's one reason it was left out because it was so cost prohibitive. We could do so much more in other areas. Uh, the parking right there in front of his place is not possible because of the the big trucks that turn go down to the landfill. You know, it just requires a lot of space to turn there. And, uh, just not enough room to allow parking right there in front of his building. Uh, we've looked at all of that, uh, you know, just to be able to park in front of the building doesn't look like it's possible. We're open for suggestions, any kind of suggestions that we can. We've taken a look at that beside your building where it's broken. We're we'll trying to get that repaired back into a shape where people can use the full extent of that space there. You know, not be hindered by that hole that's up there. We're trying to get that repaired. But uh, as far as handicapped parking, that would be the closest place that we could offer, you know, would, that would put them on a level of the sidewalk there. But other than that, uh, you know, if you don't have any suggestions or anything, you know. Do you have any suggestions? Like, do you have any ideas about what you think would be best? I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm confused on why we went from, there was there was a curb there before, but it had been worn down after so many years, to where we now have three foot of grass all the way down through there that wasn't there before. Right. Part of that was just the requirements by, by it being a state highway. You know, it's not a city street. Is that going to be on fact, both sides? Pardon? Is that going to be on both sides? Or is one side of the road? The curb? Yeah. Well, the sidewalk over there on that side doesn't require a curb for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not an engineer. I don't know why that it was mandated that to be that way. But uh, but we had no choice in that. It, but, you know, it wasn't our directive that, that made it that way. And, uh, I sympathize with your problem. You know, I'd like to... Uh, to say we had, you know, places to put parking lots that were, you know, very accessible to your building. Uh, people are going to have to walk a half a block anyway, I think, to, you know, to be able to use your building. And, uh, you know, I understand that people are elderly and handicapped, but People nowadays, we want to park right next to the door. You know, it's like I told you. If you can go to Walmart, people will drive around five times to try to find a closer place to the door. You know, that's just the way people are. I mean, the city doesn't own much property down that area, but I think Mr. Shepherd has that lot next to his store just across the street. You might talk with him and see if he'd be open to leasing it for a parking lot. That put them pretty close. But then they have to cross two thirty one. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's big, the, the downside of downtown that's business. Yeah, big diff. They're on the side of the store, 231. Is it deep enough to park in there long? There's two. No, I don't think there is. I don't think it is. I think you have to parallel park in there. Okay, that's not deep enough. I don't think it is. We can, we can measure it and see, but... If it was, that would give him, what, you know, three, you four, about five? About five spaces there, if that were the case. Okay. Oh, I'm reminded we need a motion to accept a financial audit. <laughs> I'm sorry we got the, got away from it. Uh, you've heard the presentation by Dan. We'll come back to this. You heard a presentation by Dan regarding this financial audit. Is there a motion to make adopt? a motion? Okay. I'll second. Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, up at the hand. All right, thank you. Motion okay. carried. All right, back to this. Uh, Right now, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't even know this gentleman, but I 
really sympathize with what he's going through being an owner myself. Is there any possibility that you could push the sidewalk down towards Centertown? I guess that's the direction. Give him two spots and then start the sidewalk in the curb? Or give him a spot? If you're sure I'm saying, I'm very good at pencil and scratching, but yeah. I'm not good at this. Well, side. you've got utility poles there and you've got steps coming down from a house. Well, they were parking there before until you put the curb in. So if you just move but the they, curb down that yeah, way. Yeah, but they weren't supposed to be parking there before. Oh, I understand. I understand, yeah, but okay. I'm just trying to resolve. It's just yeah. a suggestion. I don't even know if it's possible. I think part lot. of the problem is it's the state highway. And by law, it's actually supposed to have a curb that entire. Some of the curb starts, though. It, it, well, actually, it, it starts up there at, the at, corner. His, at his corner. Yeah. No, no. Well, that. What would be wrong with it starting a car lane down and ramping up to a sidewalk? It's already built for one. I, well, I'm just. We, look, it opened up with suggestion and there's mine. Okay. I mean, it's not, a, it's not an issue that we haven't been considering for years, really. And. Uh, it's slow developing. Uh, I think as space becomes available, we'll be looking at it as potential parking. But it's been close proximity to your business. You know. Um, what about the parking on the side of my building? What if we, the city, took into consideration redoing that spot and making three three parking spaces out of that? Well, I mean, that's what we're talking about here. He was mentioning maybe even if there's enough room, put angle parking there. I think there would be. But then that creates a hazard of people backing out into 231 traffic, you know, which uh, we'll have to see what the state engineers will allow there. You know, we've got parallel parking on Main Street. Um, and we would, you know, the parallel parking up there what we're talking about would not be a problem uh, but there's I only think there's some space for two maybe in there if we got it repaired do you think there'd be three I think we could do three well our goal is to get to get it uh, repaired and uh, uh, when we're doing some patching we're talking about having the blacktop crew come in and just re-blacktop that taking it out and re-blacktopping a smoother area right there that would give you two to three places okay. which would be we could designate as handicapped or something like that right. if you all didn't park there that would open it up you know yeah, I park somewhere I live there, though. Oh, mr mayor Matt, yeah that, uh, obviously parking in hartford is an issue and it's become more of an issue now that hartford has gotten busier downtown than ever before uh, a couple of things that I think we need to note is it's a one out pro care home helpful building is now being occupied. Uh, you've got the full complement of the building office of Kings, and then you've got the hospital. We've got several people there that people are parking. We are in discussions with, uh, from an economic development committee standpoint, that we've discussed with the council about that lot that we can see Wiggins and his family on, which is all that behind pro care home health, where pro care used to be. That if we can work out something to offer municipal parking, that. Uh, another thought was is to move more of these people who work all day in these buildings on the opposite side of maybe Commonwealth Community Bank's old building and make that all day parking to where everything from Center Street on down would be like an hour or two hour parking. When you ask about where a place you could park, if we could work something out with Mr. Wiggins, this is again speculation, if we can work something out with him, then that would open up an opportunity for you to park all day and open up those spots that you're currently occupying for your patrons to park in. Uh, I will say this, we all these years we've worried about business in Hartford. What can we do to generate business in Hartford? And now we now we've got the golden egg and we don't know how to hatch it. You know what I'm saying? We've got more businesses and more buildings that are being occupied, but yet we've got a, a trouble with the parking. So it is something that not just this council but the economic development committee and, and with other business owners. I'll, my daughter and I, we own three buildings downtown. It is a it is a serious subject and uh, so it is something we are looking at, and hopefully we can work out something with Mr. Wiggins on that, on that, and that would offer up a whole lot of parking there. Uh, at least move you off to where your customers can come in. It's just a, 
they were used to parking there and just have to reprogram them where they'll be used to parking somewhere else, you know. And I think the area in front of the home health care and right beside Likens would be three, at least three prime spots right there. That, I mean, they'd have to come up to the corner to safely cross West Union, you know. But it's not like uh, we haven't tried to find a solution to the parking situation. Mr. Mayor, how far is the city from actually being able to strike off the Cape Palapa paper? They have to uh, take out... Uh, uh, you know the blacktop was already blacktopped once they got the line laid and got it con connected to the meter down there for our electrical service they'll have to take that out and put in a sidewalk you know to act as a buffer against the capers wall and then we'll have a couple of spaces over next to lichens that we'll be able to strike off there uh, right now they're in the process of pouring this up here so that's probably going to be you know, it's not it's not immediate that they're going to be striking that off. Or what do you say in the next 30, 45 days? Uh, could be. There, you know, it depends on the progress they make here on Main Street in this last block here. I mean, they poured one section, one sidewalk today. They, they have the, once it sets up, then they'll be able to pour the next part and put in the... Uh, in the brick pavers section and the and the flower bed sections, they'll be able to put those in. And so, I mean, they've not been able to work continuously on it. They've been here. They've been other projects, and so it'd be hard for me to say when they'll be able to get that. But that is one of their priorities after they get finished with this on Main Street. And if memory serves me correct, when that's done and the way the rotation of the park is going to come in off of 231 by pulling in by Capers and pulling up by, off on Highway 69 could open somewhere around 10 to 11 parking spots right there. I know that's not directly in front of your building, but it is right. one building away. Uh, well, it's half a block from, from your building, and it would be right up the sidewalk to the crossing there, so... Uh, I know it's difficult for the elderly sometimes to walk that far, but um, that's the safest, I think, way for us to handle parking in that area. We're going to do what we can to try to help you. You know, if you can throw, like I said, to suggestions, anything, we're limited on what we can do. So, uh, they're going to tear up, supposed to grind up and repave West Union Street from the intersection down to Centertown, I think. Uh, that's in the process. supposed to have started today and they didn't do it, so uh, it'll create more of a mess, but when we get done, it'll be a lot better road. And, but anyway... I wish I gave you a definitive answer, and I can't right now. I'll just tell you, we continue to work on it and try to do the best we can with you. Appreciate you being there, you know, and we sympathize with you. But uh, this is not a problem just developed last night. You know, it's been an ongoing problem. So, anybody else? Okay. Um, we look at the minutes of our last meeting. Had a <coughs> One day, maybe. <laughs> you ain't hardly played very. Hmm. You ain't hardly played very. I've got corrected, so I guess she wouldn't let me let Mom say yeah, that. She <laughs> yeah, she didn't want you to say it. <laughs> it said Mayor David Coleman. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody gave him a promotion. Mayor, Mayor said Mayor David Coleman led in prayer. <laughs> yeah, he, he's always talking about framing that. <laughs> just be here in the morning, eight o'clock. I'll turn the keys over to you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
if you've had a chance to read them, I'll accept the motion to adopt the minutes as presented. I make a motion. Okay, second. Second. All right. Thank Any questions, second. discussion about the minutes? All in favor? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Tara, do you have something for us tonight? I, uh, I drafted several ordinances that I, I think we're going to be getting to later on in the meeting. Um, but I think there were some members of the Economic Development Committee who wanted to address the council. So I'll okay. defer to them. All right. Economic Development Council Committee. Committee, council, whatever the case may be. <laughs> You want us to stand up with him? <laughs> you have a big target on a better, better target if you're standing up. <laughs> For most, I think most of y'all know the Economic Development Committee is a, a committee that was created several years ago by this council uh, when the occupational tax uh, passed that we could look at the future and the growth of this community. And, and having said that, uh, Mary Bell, Ms. Fisher, uh, Jerry Likens are the two representatives currently on the, on the council that sits on it. Myself, my daughter, Tara Ward, Rains Evans, and then Lynn Thompson sits on it currently. Our goal is to sit and do whatever we can to help the future growth and the development of the city of Hartford. And if you'll just indulge me just a second before a couple of recommendations I'd like to make, uh, there's some points of, of interest I'd like to point out that is obvious. We are a community. We're an older community. Look, if I'm blessed here in about 10, 15 more days, I'm going to be 61. I'm getting closer to that age of homestead exemption. We are a community that has a whole lot of tax-exempt institutionists. So we are very dependent on a lot of revenue coming in, seeing, uh, occupational tax or property taxes and things like that. But when you get to looking at all this, uh, these numbers are relatively high for this community based upon other communities across the state. Uh, we come together a minimum of once a month, sometimes more than that, to discuss and see whatever we can do. And I want you to understand, we don't have any power other than have discussions and to come back and recommend, make recommendations to this committee, to this council. And this council from that makes those type of decisions and any expenditures of monies from that. Ms. Jody Ashby is a representative from the county's economic development committee. And over the last several months or a year or so, the interest in Ohio County, Hartford, Beaver Dam, Ohio County proper has grown quite a bit, particularly, I guess, since OZ Tyler and the reloc and putting some brick houses in this community. And there's businesses and there's opportunities coming available. But their concern is, is what's happening with Hartford. And I just mentioned the tax base. So we've given a lot of thought. We've given a lot of consideration. Tara and I, and, and I don't know what she does her best thinking, I guess, late at night. <laughs> she'll call me up, she'll text me. And then the other night, it was very late in the night, she texted me. And I just called her up and said, Tara, do me a favor. Do me one favor. You know, look at Hartford's tangible and inventory taxes. I want to know how much revenue we're getting off of that. Because from a business standpoint, from a business owner standpoint, that can be a drain on a business paying these high tax dollars. I mean, I can tell you in years past when I sat on the council, there have been other businesses that would come in in the first of the year, end of the year, move their inventory or move it out of the community so it wouldn't be sitting on the property on January 1 so they wouldn't have to pay taxes. When we got to look at that number, that number is one of the highest in the states. And I'll have Tara correct me if I'm wrong on this. 48 but we got, cents. Huh? 48 cents. Per $100, that's value. That's pretty significant. And if you've got a business like, uh, I used to call it Wim Homers. I don't know what the name of it is correct now, Ford Line. Places like that, they have a lot of inventory, or they potentially could have a lot of inventory sitting on their yard. So in looking at that, we got to looking, and the number came back at approximately $20,000, thousand dollars I think, is the city of Hartford is generating. What we'd like to do is make a recommendation. We'd like to make a recommendation that we cut that back to the state average. And that's going to cost us about $10,000 a year, lost revenue. And we're all knowing, believe me, when I sit on that council, it's you got bills to pay. What we'd like to do is make a recommendation to cut it back to the state average. It's going to cut it down about $10,000 a year. And the EDC receives about X amount of dollars a year. We'd like to turn around and show and take that $10,000 that comes out of our, into our budget, move it back to the general fund so you're not seeing a loss there. It's going to turn around, your money's allocated to the to the EDC, turn around and take that money back out of the EDC and put it back in the general fund so you won't see a loss. The second thing we'd like to see is done is property taxes. Your, in 2015, your property tax rate was over 55 cents per $100 assessed value. 
the council at that time did actually lower taxes, and as of 2018, it was down to 50.1 cents. But that's still over double the state average. What we're recommending to do is go back and lower it by 20%, down to 40.9. Still higher, still higher than some of our other communities in this, in this county, but it shows a good faith effort. And I'm going to make this. We're asking for people to make investment in the city of Hartford. If the city of Hartford is not willing to make an investment in itself, how can I ask John Q. Public to come here and do the same thing? Now, I'm going to ask you to do this on a leap of faith. Mr. Chen's presented you with a budget, and the budget shows that, that, that it's going to be a positive budget. But from this loss, when you're going to turn around and take that $10,000 back out of our funds and move it back to the general fund, he's still got enough buffer in there where you can absorb that cost if it doesn't work. We have to try something. And I don't want to use a narrative that I heard the other night about when these businesses came to look at this county. I don't want to say what they, what they said in regard to looking at Hartford. We have to move first. You know, we have to make that effort. And so, again, we're recommending cutting it down to state average on the, on the tangible and the inventory tax, and we're making, we're making a recommendation to cut it back by 20% on the property tax. We have to make an effort. About four or five years ago, I can't remember, Ms. Martin and I made a visit over to Brad, to Brad Alley, is that his name? I wanted to look at lowering taxes in the city of Hartford. He thought I had three heads. He had never had anybody ask that question before. <clears throat> never had that, had, had, never had that question asked before. Nobody wants to lower taxes. We did make a bold effort, we did lower it that year, and then even actually a couple years later, the, the compensating rate, because we did have a little growth, lower allowed our taxes to go down again. I'm asking the city of Hartford to invest in the city of Hartford. Your mayor has presented you a budget that's going, to, that's going to actually have enough room to make this change. We have to make a change. Again, what I said a while ago when I was talking about these gentlemen, right now you drive downtown Hartford. Look at the progress making downtown Hartford with the sidewalks going in. Almost every building is going to have a business in it, with the exception of one next door to the building. Tara and I are renovating to have a business put in it. We're having growth. We're seeing the future of this, this city grow. We've got to make an investment in ourselves. So I'm asking to at least consider these ordinances. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens to see if it's a shot in the arm to see if we can see future growth in this community. One more thing I'm going to ask for from the standpoint of the EDC. We have no power to spend money. None. Zero whatsoever. We want to make that clear. This is a subcommittee, a committee that makes recommendations back to this council. You all vote the expenditures of money. You're the only one with the power to spend the money. What we are asking to do is, is allow the mayor on up to a $750 uh, limit that if we make a recommendation to do something based upon his authority, he can approve it at that time. What that does is it allows us not to miss a window of an opportunity. If there's a meeting that one of the members need to go to, if there's a program that we need to be involved with, there's something, by the time the committee, the council comes together to meet, that window could have been missed. Again, we're doing everything we can to help come back and grow the community and make Hartford a better place today. So. Uh, this is nothing any different than what the mayor doesn't already have. He doesn't have to have really council approval up front, but we want to make it very clear. All money spent by the, or excuse me, not by the EDC, through the EDC funds are clear, documented, and above reproach. So uh, we would like for that to also be done. And then uh, those are the three things I've got. I believe Mr. Evans has got something he'd like to present to you also. Um, it's not necessarily on behalf of the EDC, but if you'd like me to go ahead and go, I can. I mean, has anybody got any questions on this? I, I, I know it's unusual to come in to ask to have taxes lowered. Please, it's an investment tomorrow in the future of the city of Hartford. Let me explain to you about property taxes. It's based on our tax base. There's a certain rate that we charge, and it gives us an amount over here that we basically get the same amount every year. It can go up to a maximum of 4% which is not much, without having to have public hearings, okay? But what happens then is we're not allowed to change this over here more than 4%. So if we can get businesses to come in and raise our tax base, we have to lower the tax rate to keep this over here consistent, okay? It's called a compensating rate. So. If we go ahead and lower, that will bring businesses in, which will in turn raise our tax base. That's the theory. But it will also bring in occupational tax. It will also bring in more insurance premiums. It will bring in 
it'll it will have effect over our major funding sources if we can lower the tax rate. So it's a it's a bold step, but it's a step of faith. Thinking, I know we have businesses that are looking at Hartford, and our tax rate is what's keeping them from coming into Hartford. And there is one more thing I do want to point out. I made a statement that the city of Hartford is a community of a lot of tax exempt. The school board, uh, the, the wellness center, the courthouse, the community center, all these things are tax exempt. Even the facility I work for, the hospital is tax exempt. But I can tell you, and it's, it's no secret, it was just made public this past week, we are looking at building a new surgical care center, several million dollars worth of surgical care center. And if we bring new staff on there, there is something that generates revenue for this city greater than property taxes. It's called occupational tax because health care, good, bad, or indifferent, has a relative good pay scale. So, you know, if we continue to see growth and we continue to bring people in, it may not be paying property taxes, but you can see a growth in occupational tax. So, again, any business that would come to town, whether it's through property taxes or occupational tax, can help shore up the taxes and, and the finances in the city of Hartford. So, that's our recommendation. You can have any questions, we'll be glad to try to answer them to the best of our ability. But remember, we have to make an investment, and it has to start with us first. The amount we're talking about losing is right now would be approximately eighty-seven thousand dollars out of roughly about a one point four million dollar income. Eighty-six, eighty-seven thousand out of one point four million. So it's doable. It, it means that we we'll have to watch. Mr. Mayor, did you not say that even after this reduction, there was still a buffer left in your budget? I think there is, yes. Anyway, that's, that's a presentation. Uh, the question is, do you want to see those tax rates come down? want to see uh, the mayor have that limited ability to spend some money should the need arise in the economic development committee's uh, vision. And because I'm a type and I'm on that commission, it won't be spent frivolously. <laughs> <laughs> or daily. More daily. Because <laughs> we didn't put a day for the time frame on that. It's $750 every day for 30 days. <laughs> but before we have the, before we have, I mean, we need the motion if we're going to discuss it. Uh, that's Robert's order, rules of order, way of doing things. Whether you accept the motion or not is after discussion, but uh, if you want to discuss it, we need a motion to lower the tangible property down to the state average of 22. Actually, you don't do a motion for that. That's an ordinance. Yeah. Uh, that would be an ordinance. That's a yeah. But to create an ordinance. <laughs> is, I mean, it's in here. Uh, yeah. What is? Your ordinance for your property tax. Oh, the, yeah. for tonight's consideration? Yes. Yeah. The only thing is your limit. Do I? Oh, well, your limit was the only thing I think that he discussed that we need, would need a motion on. This is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Actually, it's my understanding it's already written into the ordinance for a presentation. So okay. the only thing you need to vote on would be the seven hundred fifty dollars okay. approval by yourself. To so include that into the ordinance? No, no, that, no, 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 that was not. That's not. An and I and I'll I'll kind of comment from a legality standpoint too. I think the mayor would like that just so he knows that he has the council support. Mm -hmm. Under the law, under a mayor council standpoint, he does have appropriation of funds, and under a municipal order, he can spend up to twenty five hundred dollars. Right. But I think he's wanting to kind of show some good faith between the EDC and his own showing that it be of transparency. Right. So. That's that's the biggest thing. We would love things to be as transparent as possible. Everything above the code. Mayor Bill, make a motion. Yeah. Can I? Or, oh. Oh. You made a motion. I'll second it. I'll make a motion and let David make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. It's been discussed. I was trying to figure out if y'all have made the motion. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
20 and a half. Yeah. Three. Okay, so I got two. But they're, they got a motion right now. Four or five. Hmm. They got a motion right now. I second. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any discussion about the motion on expanding limitations? Any discussion about the motion on that? Okay. If there is none, all in favor of the flipping hand. Okay, thank you. Motion's carried. Then you can spend seven to seven hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Rains, tell us what you've got for us. Okay. Oh. I'll take the floor. <laughs> it's big. We only approved one thing a night. I thought I was afraid of. I have a lovely little picture here. It's it's a proposal for a flower garden on Washington Street, and I guess you'd say it's, you call it the Bowling Green. I don't know actually where you'd say it's at, but um, behind the newspaper, the islands. radio, the it's islands. Right on the road here. Mm -hmm. There's two media. I had a landscaper draw up a little plan for it, if you want to look at it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's for $1,350. And he proposes putting in. It's crepe myrtles. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah. I can kind of read it. Okay. Uh, and Chinese boxwoods, I believe, is what it says. But Are there any colors? And the crepe myrtles will have color. Well, we need some perennials in there, too. He discussed perennials. A lot of it depends on maintenance and things of that nature, whether or not the seed would want to do it, if he wants to do it. I don't need to be discussed, but for the prairie myrtles and the boxwoods, to, to get it put in, he will take care of preparation of soil. Yes, fertilizer, whatever. Area, right. Do what? It's those two. It's those two, two bowling. Or I call them bowling greens, but the two oh. little islands in front of Roxanne oh. Island. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're, they're, they're what about ten feet? Yeah. They're about eight feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, it's just playing grass is all they are right now. <laughs> I can't make heads or tails out of that. I just think it's ugly. <laughs> by, by the way, Mr. Mayor, while we're on that subject down there about that island, because we go down that way so much to come out, do, we, do yourself a favor and look at the road there on the right across from the island and the house where Mrs. Uh, Woosley, I think, used to live. It looks like that ditch is undercutting the road to the black the uh, concrete quite a bit. There's areas where it, where the water runs down the hill so fast. It looks like it's come underneath of it undercut. It looks like I saw some undercut. Okay. Huh. I wouldn't think it'd be a major undertaking. It would just be a step, I guess, in the right direction to kind of unify it. Some of the do what? Are you volunteering to maintain it? No. <laughs> well, I can't speak. Uh, I'm no gardener. I'm no landscaper. Well, I'm just a small man. Dean Gray. I don't know if Craig Rogers is going to grow. Dean Gray. What's the name of his company? He doesn't have a company. I'm not his company. He's not even a landscaper. He just took it up. He's a landscaper. He's a landscaper. He's a landscaper. She's my favorite ginseng. Yeah, I'm going to harvest it. One off, stuck in the ground. <laughs> All right. Motion to accept this or not? Well, second. Second. All right, discussion regarding the motion. I think we need some perennials in there. Need some who? You tell him. He mentioned it. <laughs> oh, perennials. I know what those are. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, know. Yeah. Pardon? Okay. Yeah. The money will come out of the economic development funds, committee's funds. Okay. Uh -uh. So is that a modified motion to, to accept it with perennials? No, he mentioned the cost. <laughs> doing it at 1350. The cost does not include perennials. I discussed it. Um, his recommendation, because I like lilies, and I, I made a recommendation. He said, for the time being, it would just be best to have this, because... There may be a quilting club that wants to take it on as a project. But <laughs> bingo. We there. quilt, we don't dig. <laughs> Boy Scouts. It would require a lot less maintenance if there aren't yeah. perennials. Any more discussion? 
if you're in favor of doing this and uplifting hand, thank you. Motion carried. Yes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Success. <laughs> you and Matt can get a motion. Is there anybody else who wishes to address the council tonight? Just for you. <laughs> thank you. So you want me to get back to my Okay, go ahead. Okay. She must. I have one ordinance that I don't think is on here today, and I don't have it in my pile, but um, the golf cart amendment. Is it, you didn't get a copy? Did I, did I, oh, I did. I'm sorry. I thought this was, yeah, I have it. There it is. I thought it was, it was yeah, two, three, four, and five. Ordinance uh, 2019 04. You all had discussed some months ago about amending the golf cart ATD ordinances regarding the dates that permits would be due. Yes. And during that time period, it appears that our state legislature has actually amended the golf cart statute. Um, so we were going to have to amend our ordinance anyway to comply with the state requirements. So what you have in front of you is an amendment of that statute that um, sets out the requirements of how what a golf cart must be equipped with to operate on a city street. And primarily it has to include headlamps, tail lamps, stop lamps, front and rear, rear turning signals, and one red reflex reflector on each side of the rear. Um, and also an exterior mirror mounted on the driver's side. And a parking brake. Yes, and yes. on the back there's... There's one more reflector back there, and it's got our our permit sticker, permit sticker on mm -hmm. it. And so, yes, and a parking brake, and they want um, seat belts. Yes. So, for you to have a for you to have a golf cart in the city of Hartford, it practically has to be a car. And, and the horn. It says <laughs> a horn. It means I think they have horns, but don't they? Maybe well, not. they have lights on them, but most of them no okay. car. I thought they had a button. Okay. Okay. Anyway, that's the new uh, state. That's it's the new state requirement. State. That, okay. That's oh, straight from the statute. Uh, Section B sets out the permit stickers, and you all had talked about making them um, renewable each year on July 1st. Um, and they shall be displayed on the uh, rear driver's side of the vehicle. Do we have a fine in here for people? That, that is under your ATV ordinance. I believe it's $50 a first offense, 100 the second, I think is, <laughs> is how the original was written. Right. Yeah. So that's originally. So did this, may I ask a question? Does it say golf cart or does that include any type of mobilized vehicle? That's, that's just ATV. for the golf carts. Now the ATVs and everything, they have their own requirements, which is already set out in our ATV ordinance. So they have to have a turn signal on the golf cart, so hand signals are not appropriate? It, <laughs> that's a statement. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to require some things to some yeah, people that run these up and down the highway. This is not City of Hartford. My understanding yeah. is Beaver Dam has also updated theirs to reflect the same, but this yeah. is the statute. This is yeah. straight from the statute. It's going to be easy to enforce because you're going to pull it over. Yeah, because yeah. 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 it's not going to be compliant. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. What about the kids driving? You are not That's supposed to operate without a license, right. and you're only supposed to operate within daylight hours. Well, you need a license for yeah. <laughs> in case it's raining. Very good point. In case it's coming off, heavy fall. Take it up a Frankfurt. Very good point, Mr. Rimbrough. Yes. What about a ride in the park? I'm sorry? What about a ride in the park you cross uh, on the back street? Uh, a ride, I'm sorry, sir. A ride more? What if you have to? Go across one of the back roads and there's a mow yard. A riding mow Oh, just yeah. across yeah. the street? You can just cross the street with one. You just can't use it as a joyride vehicle throughout the town. We don't want you to carry a bomb sack. <laughs> well, how about a cooler on that? <laughs> the interesting thing is that the city hall will catch a lot of flack over this and people yes. don't realize it's a state ordinance and it's not our choosing. Yes. Or could it be bolstered on the I, we can get it. We can get it uh, advertised on this. We need a motion to accept first this. First reading. Oh. First reading oh, on it. Read. That's why I want to read this. Not a motion for it right now. We just need a first reading on it. Somebody read that. Read the first up part of it, Mary Bell. City of Hartford, Ordinance 2019-04. An ordinance to amend portions of Ordinance Number 2011 dash zero nine regarding the regulation operation of golf carts on designated city streets to comply with KRS 189.286 as well as amend both ordinance number 2011-09 and ATV ordinance number 2011-01. 
2016-06 to establish that permits will expire July the 1st of each year. Okay, that's the first reading of it. We'll have the next reading next month and move on adopting it then. All right. Could you uh, see where the definition of what a golf cart is according to the KRS? Mm. Because most people that's driving on the road doesn't meet that definition at all. This is the golf cart means the self control vehicle that is designated for the transportation of players or maintaining equipment on a golf course while engaged in playing golf or supervising the play of golf <laughs> or maintaining the condition of the grounds on a golf course. That's not really the. Con I think they're saying that's the purpose of the vehicle. The original <laughs> just purpose. Say what the golf cart is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if people argued that, it, it would be right out of the KRS. and they'd, we'd Anyone on this table is, is more than welcome to run for state legislator. <laughs> we'll get you out yeah. there. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. it's like I'm not playing golf at all. It's not a golf cart. Yeah. Okay. Do you have something else for us? Uh, nothing that's not already on the agenda later down. All right. Okay. Uh, next. We'll take a look at our financials. If you have any questions regarding any of those, now would be the time to bring it up. So, where do we pin your ten thousand at? <laughs> Tony said. <laughs> <laughs> Only after you approve get the second reading. Oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have any questions about any of the financials? Or? Good. Happy with the check. I didn't mark a thing on there this time. Do what now? I didn't mark a thing on there. You probably need to go back through it. Okay. Normally I mark stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody has any questions on their hand most to adopt the financials as they've been presented? I'll make the motion. motion second. second. Okay. No more discussion. Anybody? All in favor, up at the hand. Okay. Thank you. Motion carried. All right. We're open for for old business now. Before you, you should have uh, the budget for this coming year. Ordinance 2019-02. Uh, we'll need a reading of that and entertain a motion to adopt as is presented. So, Eric, you want to read the ordinance 2019-02? I've got 2019-05. It's at O2 is the, the back budget. Of your in the back. Oh, okay. I was looking at the wrong one. Oh. Yeah, I'll read that. All right. Ordinance 2019-02. An ordinance adopting the City of Hartford, Kentucky's annual budget for the fiscal year 07-01-19 through 06-30-20 by estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. Whereas an annual budget proposed and message has been prepared and delivered to the City Council and whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget proposal and made necessary modifications. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City of Hartford, Section 1, that the annual budget for physical year beginning uh, July the 1st, 2019, and ending June the 30th, 2020, is hereby adopted as follows. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adopt this budget. Okay, second. Okay. Okay. All right, discussion regarding the budget. Any item? 
what you see here is what will go into the paper. What you see here is what determined what goes to that page, okay? Any discussion? All in favor of adopting this budget, uplifted hand. Thank you, motion's carried. All right, the next item is uh, planning and zoning. It's in here because I just have been asking for recommendations for people to serve on the planning and zoning. I have a new member, Bill DePuckett, is going to uh, serve on the commission, but I still need, still need one to serve on the Board of Adjustments, which meets three or four times a year. Uh, must be somebody that has property here in Hartford, doesn't have to live here. But uh, if you come up with somebody, I'd enter, you know, like to know a name sometime, okay? The sooner the better. I'm just saying that in passing, all right? Well, part of the, the push is if you were trying to do your comprehensive plan, do what now? the fire's voting and trying to get the comprehensive plan going until we can get that. We can. Yeah. The planning and zoning is working on their comprehensive plan, and we need a full contingent and the planning and zoning commission and board to act on that. So the sooner the better, okay? okay. All right. Um, open the floor for new business now. Uh, Take a look at should be in your packet of uh, ordinance 2019-03, and this is <coughs> I thought the prop tangible property was going down to 22. Yeah. I thought that was the state. The 29.5 is state average 26.5 I just left the middle watercraft the same as it was. Okay, yeah, but I thought that. Okay. But that's the same average when you exclude all zeros. All right. Uh, ordinance 2019 03. This is the one that we were talking about bringing the tax rates down on tangible property and property, uh, the property tax rate. Okay, this is what we're talking about here. Uh, we keep. We won't vote on it tonight or anything like that. We'll have a first reading, so you want to read? Uh, I can't even say it tonight. I don't huh? wear my glasses. Oh, don't <laughs> you read it. you got your glasses. The ordinance at the top? Yeah, just the, the highlight, the capitalized stuff. An ordinance levying taxes for general multiple purposes for the fiscal year of January 2019 through December 31st, 2019. On all taxable properties within the taxing jurisdiction of the city of Hartford on each $100 fiscal year 2019, excess valuation is followed on real property. Does that mean real estate? Mm hmm Okay. At 0 .409 cents tangible and personal property, 29.25 cents including real and personal property of public service companies. Okay. First read. Is that 29? 25 is 29 and a quarter cents? Yeah. yeah. Okay. When does this go into effect? As soon as... Yeah. Mine was, uh, yeah, mine was. Taxes. Well, of course, the property tax will be effective when we start issuing the property tax bills in October or September or October is when that'll be. <coughs> when that will be utilized. And that's when we do the watercraft as well. Tangible property is the same time. It's, it's January 1st. January 1. Yeah. As of January 1st. As of January 1st. It'll also go into effect this year. Yeah, this year's tax bill, so. Well, if we're going to lower it, why are we doing it this way? I mean, can't you lower it and then send them out? If that's we're going to lower some of this property, well, I thought personal property was, oh, it's 40. Okay. Never mind, it went down. <laughs> it was 50. Pardon, pardon that <laughs> senior slip. <laughs> okay. Was it 40.9 or just 40? Because you drop it down 20% from the 50.9, it brings it down was to it, Yeah. Was it 50.9? I, yeah. I thought it was even 
running at 50. According to the 2018 rate book, the department revenue is at 50.9. So that's what I used. Okay. I'll I'll take much huh? I can make a quick comment. I want to. This is, I realize it's a bold step, but I think it's helping this community move in the right direction for the future growth of this community. To help bring other people in. Not just people, but businesses in. I thought, I thought that uh, it was 50. Was it 50.9? It's, it's 0.409 and... Okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right, that's first reading. We'll take it up at the next month. Uh, one more new business, but I didn't realize it wasn't on the ordinance. You had your chance. Okay. <laughs> There's also included here ordinance uh, 2019-05. It wasn't on the agenda, but that's the ordinance y'all asked me to uh, create regarding parking. Oh, don't use that one. That's at the last meeting we made a motion to ask her to to uh, come up with an ordinance regarding. Parking on Center Street. Right. East East Center already has two hour parking on it. We haven't said very much because of the courthouse and the businesses in this area. But once they tear down those buildings and create a parking lot, you know what I'm talking about? The old Farm Bureau building. Yeah, you know, Old Farm Bureau building. Once they tear that down, then we'll start enforcing the two hour parking on on East Center Street. But we've been asked to limit West Center Street to two hour parking in fact but also with a 15 minute parking slot right there next to 231 the first slot okay all right so somebody want to read this ordinance here Mary Bell back to you all right ordinance 2019-05 an ordinance imposing parking restrictions on portions of Center Street in downtown Hartford for the convenience and safety of the citizens. Okay. All right. So that's first reading on that. I was wrong, it's 58. That's what happens when you get old. Okay. Um, The next item that we have for discussion is it's listed as water software. Um, go can ahead. we go back to the budget? Back to the sewers. Okay. <laughs> sewers not on there right now, but we can go ahead and take okay. care of it. Okay. Yeah, it won't right. take long. The, the grant, supposedly, that they're giving us was only voted on to continue through June or to, yeah, through June this year. Right. So... I ask one of the members to be sure and bring that up at the June meeting and extend it on to right. the end of the year. Okay. But I don't know whether he really, you know, was just patronizing me or what, but he said he would. But it wouldn't hurt to follow up and make sure they do it. We need okay. to tell our representative. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we have a foot meter in place, baby. I'd say Pardon? I'd say meter. I've got it down here to talk about it under information on what we can. Okay. Um, uh, water software is the next on the agenda. Let me just tell you what that is. It's, it's pretty brief. Um, our water billing and collection uses uh, computer software that uh, incorporates what they call an itron. It's a device that we don't have to go and manually read meters. We can drive by and electronically it records the reading for each, each meter. <laughs> Saves a lot of time. Uh, that was purchased how many years ago was that? Uh, 2016. Was it 2000? Okay. They only last, the net, none of it will ever last more than five years. Okay. Because the software will always be updated. Yeah. Uh, the representative for the company came by and told us that we could go ahead and use it for two years the way it is now. Or for free, they will update it with a the newer system. But 
it does require us incorporating new software into our computers. Uh, the device is very handy. It can not only read the meters, it can tell the hourly usage of that meter, give you a reading, like you'll be able to tell when a leak started, uh, stop, you know. Uh, it tells you a average monthly reading off of the one device, but it all. Anyway, um, how much was it? To three? 30 31. I think it's thirty one hundred dollars to upgrade. It's in that thirty one hundred dollar range uh, to upgrade to this newer software. When Does it come with a new reader and everything, or no? No, this is just the old software. I don't yeah. think you need a new yeah. new reader. It's just upgrading what software. Yeah. Okay. Instead of using one type of system, they call it. They got initials for, you know, for a new type of system. Yeah. Let me get it because uh, you've also got twenty four hundred in training, right? Do what now? There's twenty four hundred dollars in training. Yeah. It's either that or go back to reading everything manually, which, yes. While we're talking about it, there's still a pretty good lead. Evans court that probably needs to be back there where they repaired. Yeah, it's pretty in bad. that parking lot. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a bird bath now. It just it's just like a huge puddle out there. It just stays there. They worked on it. They yeah. dug it all out, but it's it's still leaking. There's still maybe you struck water, water back there. <laughs> maybe you struck water. Maybe, I don't know. We'll have to take a look. Okay. It's just right around that meter there. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, that's not the one we want. What are the next pictures? That was $20,505. Uh, what are the next pictures? Where you signed it? Well, it's right here, I thought, in it. Right here is where it is. Okay. Okay. It's a software upgrade is uh, from MVRS to FCS software upgrade. They're not charging us anything for that. Uh, the Atron software remote installation configuration setup takes uh, five hours at one hundred seventy-five dollars an hour. Is eight hundred seventy-five dollars. Uh, the mobile IMA drive-by cloud setup fee, uh, $950. On-site and remote startup services, um, anyway, $3,690. Um, that's still a... Oh. I want a table list till next month. I don't, I don't know how to say it's with that. Was it the second page? I don't know how to say it's about what we're presenting. Ah, uh, that looks more like it. Okay. Software upgrade's not going to cost us anything. The installation configuration set up uh, the software $875 training is $2,440 so it's going to be $3,315 and that'll get us through for the next five years supposedly so anyway uh, it's like everything else is they can't make it last for 10 years because they got to sell you the program every five years or whatever. So, so anyway, um, if we can keep going with our current system for two years and then we got to go to that or we can go to it now and it won't cost us anything for the software. Uh, if we go up in two years and we have to go to it, they'll charge us for the software. So, 
anyway. That's what it is. How much is software? Pardon? How much is the software? They didn't really tell us, but it, it's going to be the way that they're. It's going to be Bad. in the thousands. Mm-hmm. So it's going to let you, what's it going to let you do that you can't do It's now? an upgrade to the iTron that we've got. You know, basically, all they're doing now is just going out and reading. We're not using the iTron to the maximum of its ability. There's going to be training to come in to teach the guys, the field people, how to better utilize the, the iTron itself. Uh, you want to go get the iTron? What the iTron can do, it can, it can produce okay. management reports. Work reports, any number of things concerning the water. I guess my question is whether or not your upgrade could pay for itself and what it could do that you're not doing already. What you, could, you see what I'm saying? Well, what, what we've got now is only going to last two more years, and then they're going to quit uh, supporting it. You know? The hand handle is going away, and you'll be using a tablet. So you have to have the software. This is like the first step before you would actually implement the whole thing. We will be forced to do that later on, but if we can do, you can do the software now, and get that set up. Then, when the handheld becomes obsolete, then you can buy their tablet. But thereafter, you can buy a tablet from Walmart, or it will not be in like a specialized piece of equipment right now. Well, we've already got tablets, you know, that we can't be right. using. But it, but if this one goes down, you have to make sure to get it out in time to get it back to read by the next month. We won't have that issue anymore. But I mean, it, they control that, They're the software updates. They and only them? They, um, well, this software, iTron, actually uploads into our accounting package. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so you're, gotcha. you're kind of married to iTron, you really don't have a choice there. Dang it. <laughs> I mean, you could buy a new accounting software and then you could mm-hmm. get something different. I'll make a motion with that. Or spend the money for. You want to have to later. Yeah. Either now or two years from now, you'll be forced into it and the cost will be higher. Yeah. Second? Well, okay. Any discussion to this? Okay. All in favor of doing that now? All right. Thank you. Half hand. (laughs) Motion carried. Uh, Two things that I have that are not listed. One's on the flume meter. We've talked about this. Uh, The engineer got back with me, gave me some estimates of what he thinks. I think he's a little high in some areas. Um, what he found was a company that makes a fiberglass preformed meter from <laughs> you just set you cut your sewer line, you set this thing in, rehook your sewer line. The electronics then have to be installed to monitor the flow, which we we already use. Uh, it can already be done by a fellow that we use down here at the water plant, uh, Jeff. It's Jeff's last name. Morris. Morris. Jeff Morris. Burrow son. HTF. He does our electronics down here, and he can put in the electronic system and monitor this thing. And he's saying that uh, it is, it's going to be real deep. So he's saying it has to be done by a contractor. He estimated twenty thousand dollars. I don't think it'll cost twenty thousand dollars for them to install the meter, and then he'd allow for five thousand dollars just contingencies, which you never know what that's going to be. Maybe that's just the engineering part of it. Anyway, the flume meter he says forty six thousand. Now, if we start reading what we're sending to them and just paying for what we're sending to them and not for all the additional, we can save $46,000 in just a matter of months, I think. Uh, Especially during times when bottoms are covered with water. 
So I'm recommending that we proceed, and that's like I say, that's just an estimate. And I think it's a little high. Like conservatively, I expect it to be a little less than that. But uh, we do know that the meter is about fifteen thousand. It's preformed to sit in there. It's better than us trying to have John Ross construct one out of concrete or something like that. They can just pop it in there. And have it functioning in just a matter of time. Well, it'd pay for itself, then, wouldn't it? After what? It should. Six in months? just a few months, I'd say, yeah. Because uh, I read on there, you know, where they got the rainfall and all that. Right. And we'll know better what <laughs> we're sending them, and we'll have some. We'll have some uh, reason to point out that they need to tend to their line. <laughs> charges for it. So if you're interested in doing this, then I can contact the engineer and tell him to go ahead with the planning and we'll contract the contractor to install, install it. But uh, if you're willing to spend that much money, it'll come out of occupational tax because it is infrastructure. All right. Is there a motion to that effect? Okay. And second over here, do you have any discussion regarding the motion? Move forward. Okay. All in favor, then, I put the hand. Okay, thank you. Motion is carried. Um, and then I have one comment about our police department. They were going to be here tonight, but they uh, haven't shown up. We've uh, had one to resign. He works part time with us now, helping during vacations and training when they have to go for training for extended time. He helps us, uh, but he's got another business. He can't devote time to the police like uh, we need. We're in the process of trying to find recruits, uh, hiring people that we can hire sent for training. It's a long process. Uh, we've got one young man who's shown an interest. He lives here in Hartford. Uh, we're planning on just having him ride, ride do some riding alongs for uh, a couple months and just see how, he, how things work out with him. If he does, then we'll send him to Richmond to go through the training and uh, by the time we get through, it's going to be about a year-long process. Of course, he will be on payroll while he's up there. To, uh, Do we have any contractual documents to make sure that if we train him for that year, we send him to yeah, school, he'll, we've got him ready, he'll be that he'll to stay us. with us? He'll be for to us for a certain amount of time. Okay. Yeah, okay. we'll get our years out of him or okay. he'll have to pay us back. All right, good. I just want to give that to you as information, you know, to, to let you know that we are trying. Police departments everywhere are having a hard time finding people who want to go into it. Uh, Owensboro Sheriff's Department, you know, Beaverdam has problems with it. We all have problems with it. We've been lucky uh, to maintain what we've got so far, but we still provide 24-7 service for the citizens of Hartford. But that's all I have. So now, anybody else has anything you want to bring up? Just the basketball goals. Huh? The basketball goals. Okay, go ahead. We have a problem down here on Liberty Street. Liberty Street off of Union over here. And we got a bunch of kids that are wo bank down, which <laughs> I'm finding out that the right away. It's not the bank, I mean, in the ditch. It's the people that live there. It is their ditch. <laughs> and the kids are in the middle of the road, but they got the basketball goal on the edge of the driveway. And everything. And the parents is involved in it now, so <laughs> they dealing with the old lady and old man He's 89 years old and she's 90. And the mother come over, 
shaking her, shaking him. Mm. <laughs> so over the basketball field, and nobody thing was asking me. She just won't. She's she don't want to have to use her insurance because one of the kids get hurt down in the ditch, jumping down there, getting the ball out. And I could see her point, and then I see the kids. At least they staying out of trouble, and, you know. Yeah. So I don't. I just wanted to bring it up because when cars do come down through there, they got to stop because these kids are playing ball and stuff. And they, we talk about 10, 11, and sometimes uh, 16, 17 year old boys. But it's making a problem there with the neighbors. Neighbors feud, feud against each other. Kind of like police department problems. That's what it's <laughs> they've been the call in too. Yeah, they've been called in. They get tired of Okay. Anybody else have anything? Mr. Mayor, may I? You know, as we looked at the taxes, made a recommendation tonight, and you just made a comment about the police department. You know, it may not be too far in the future where you're going to have to start looking at consideration of doing a joint venture with the county or with Beaver Dam to have one consolidated police department. If you're having a hard time filling the roles with the municipality setting the way they are, you may have to look at those opportunities out there. I'm not, not saying that we're doing anything to lose our identity, but it might show, shore up a opportunity to have a better force and provide better coverage, maybe at a lower rate. We don't have duplication of services, but again, it, it may not be in the immediate future, but I think at some point in time, you might want to start thinking about at least so having those discussions with either the county or Beaver. We almost have one now, because I think the other night, one of our, whoever was on duty that night, went over to help Beaver Dam, and the sheriff's deputy with an issue over the over Beaver Dam, I think it was. So we almost have one body now, we just, uh, I mean, lessons learned. I mean, you're, you've got larger communities in the state that already has that type of services. Mm -hmm. All right. So anything else? What about the big tank where water comes in? It's ten foot deep, seven foot full of mud. Yeah. Yeah. Been done with that. Look at all. There's water. I don't know where they got that because I've looked at that thing. You go if you go all the way around it. You said they said, huh? I mean, you were down there when they were talking about it. Yeah, if you go down where where it empties out, that you know where they after it goes all the way around the U shape. Well, you can see the bottom down there. You know, the, I don't know where they get that ten foot of mud in there. No, uh, we can flush we can flush that out, but right now it's not that much of a problem, I don't think. I think I'm thinking it's a big problem. Huh? They had me believing it's a big problem. Yeah, I don't think it is. No. So if you go down there and look <coughs> you know how how it comes in here and the sodium permanganate's added here and it goes down and comes around. Yeah. Right there, you can see the bottom of it. I mean, there's no amount of accumulation there. I don't know where they got that, but anyway, uh, we do need the, the the lagoons over here, the backwash lagoons. We do need them cleaned out. And that needs to be reworked. When we get some time and some money, that's for our projects that we got to do. But I, I, I don't think that other one. I mean, they can flush that out anytime. No problem. Okay. It'll, it'll go over to the to the backwash lagoons for it goes. But we do need to clean them out. What about the water tank? Are they working on it's it? It's working on it. The engineer's working on it. Some or another I saw where there was an influx of money. I can't remember if it's federal government or who it was. EPA came up with That was putting several million dollars into water projects. And I'm hoping that's a grant that Brad will get us lined up with. <laughs> be good. The estimate was about 300000 Half of it going to be grant, and half of it 
was BS, which I think we can swing the short term loan and take care of that in just about a matter of three, four, five years. I can't not have to issue bonds or anything. Anybody have anything else? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Anybody? Second. Second. All in favor of 50 10. Motion carried. Means adjourned. Thank you all for your attendance.